In today's homework lesson, we will be covering the surrender at Yorktown and the Treaty of Paris. Get out your history notebook and follow along. Today's guiding questions will be answered in this lesson. What did Benjamin Franklin do during the Revolutionary War? Which country joins the Americans to fight with them against the British during the war? What is the significance of the Battle of Yorktown? And what is the Treaty of Paris? And what did it recognize for the very first time? So many of you are familiar with this guy, Benjamin Franklin, a printer, an inventor, a thinker, a writer, an entrepreneur. He lived in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania during this time and participated in the Continental Congress, making the decision to declare independence from England and officially go to war. He was actually part of the revising and editing team along with John Adams and Thomas Jefferson. Um, to revise the rough draft of the Declaration of Independence. Here is his signature on the Declaration of Independence. He didn't sign it as large as John Hancock, but it's there if you look closely. Something you may not have known about Benjamin Franklin is that he spent most of the Revolutionary War in France. He had been commissioned by the new government of the American colonies to go to, over to Paris and ask the country of France to join the colonies in fighting against the British to help them win the war. You see, the French have always hated the British, and if they joined up with the Americans, they would be technically taking away land that the British had owned and would make Britain less powerful. So Ben spent much of his time in King Louis's French court, whining and dining the people there. Draw a picture of Benjamin Franklin meeting with the French, asking for soldiers to come help the Americans in the war. Finally, in 1777, Franklin's convincing paid off. The French join the American Continental Army and send over hundreds of French troops, including Navy ships, something the Americans didn't have. One of the famous French officers who comes over is a young man named the Marquis de Lafayette. He is a loyal and excellent military strategist. Lafayette works under the command of General Washington and is an important figure in winning several battles for the Americans during the course of the war. He was chosen by Washington to command the Continental Forces in Virginia in 1781. Lafayette became one of the three division commanders in the American Army during the Yorktown campaign, which is significant since this is the last major battle of the war and the one which the British finally surrender. Check out this battle map. Notice where the Redcoats are along the York River. Their fort is there along the river, protected by three major warships and another platoon across the river in Gloucester. Washington's headquarters is in the bottom left corner, along with one of the other major French generals named Rochambeau. The French and Continentals dig trenches around Yorktown surrounding the British, and over many days they creep closer and closer, digging trenches. Take a moment now to draw a battle map of your own in your notes with the British fort, the river, along with the French and Americans closing in. As French and Americans get closer every day, the French Navy was sailing down to Virginia and then go up the York River to trap the British from the river. This meant that the British were surrounded and could not retreat. After a day of the French Navy ships pummeling the British warships that had been protecting the fort, three of the British ships were at the bottom of the river, sunk, and no use to the redcoats in the fort. The rest had been captured by the successful French fleet of 24 ships, and it was then that the British realized they had no chance but to surrender. The Battle of Yorktown is part of a siege, which means a battle that lasts many days. It starts at the end of September and ends October 19, 1781. It is considered the last great battle of the American Revolutionary War. This is where the British surrender and the British government realizes it is time to end this war and considers a peace treaty. You can go to Yorktown today and still see the trenches dug many, many years ago by the French and colonist soldiers as they moved closer to the British fort. Today, these trenches are known as earthworks and are covered with grass and have eroded so that they are not as tall as they once were 
when they were first dug during the Battle of Yorktown, but it's still amazing to see that after all these years, they have survived. This was a huge battle for Washington. The numbers show just how many forces there truly were. The British had 9,700 troops compared with almost double that with American and French forces combined. This was not just a ground battle, but a naval battle too, with 24 French ships against 19 British ships. The casualties that I circled there in the bottom show just how devastating this battle was for the British. General Cornwallis was the British general of the Red, Cro Red Coat troops in Virginia in 1781. He was in charge of the British Army in Yorktown. He was the general who surrendered to Washington at the Battle of Yorktown. Now, interesting story. He was so humiliated by the defeat at Yorktown that on the day that he was supposed to participate in the surrender ceremony, he stayed in his tent claiming that he was sick. Instead of going himself to hand over the sword to General Washington as the official symbol of surrender, he stayed behind and sent his second in command to do it for him. So in response to Cornwallis sending his second in command rather than attending the surrender ceremony himself, Washington also sends his second in command to receive the sword. You can see this happening in the painting shown here. And I'd like you to go ahead and draw a version of this yourself in your notes. You can see Washington on the right side in the back with his troops there on the right, the French on the left, and the Redcoats are coming to surrender their arms over to the Patriots. And leading the Redcoat line is Cornwallis's second in command. So Yorktown is won, and the newspapers throughout the colonies rejoiced. This major victory caused the Redcoats to recognize that any continued fighting would most likely result in their failure and the loss of more men. Thus, not many more battles were fought after that, and the British troops began heading back home to England. The Treaty of Paris of 1783 negotiated peace between the United States and Great Britain, ending the Revolutionary War officially, and recognizing American independence for the very first time. You can see the actual primary source there in the top right corner. It was signed in Paris, France, hence the name. The Continental Congress named a five-member commission to negotiate the peace treaty that included people you might recognize, John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, John Jay, Thomas Je Jefferson, and Henry Lawrence. So the Revolutionary War is over. Now the map looks like this. There we go. The gold represents British. The purple represents French control. See the difference in the two maps? Pre-war boundaries and now post-war? Notice the pink representing the United States, now finally on the map.